Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Isthmus City. Looking right over the demilitarized zone against Dwemus Strongmouth. Is it Strongmouth? I don't know. And his dwarven army of theocratic -y dangerousness. Leading the charge is Narvek, worshipper of Necros, the necromancer. And he's here with an entirely un-necromantic army. But that's our nation. Off to the east of the city, you can see the Shrine to the Wizard King, which sadly does really not much good for us in terms of making our troops cooler or anything. But it does, if your troops visit it, gives them a bonus. Dwemus is obviously building up. We're at peace, so I don't expect that he's coming after me, but I'm curious who he is coming after. And while we're around here, we should grab this Heart of the Blight. That might put us into conflict with Camille, but we'll see. She does have a city close. She has a couple. That's a dwelling, actually. I didn't know you could cast spells on dwellings. Regardless, I am Marcus Aurelius, and this is Age of Wonders 3, a roleplay campaign where you, the viewer, gets to make the decisions. And we're going to end the turn. That will be our decision to start the episode. Isma City now has its bell tower. Wanderer's Way. What did Wanderer's Way just build? Was it a barracks? Oh no, builder. Right. Duh. All right. We're going to start here. And we're going to get a road all the way to Leticia. And you know what? Let's just build another one. So we don't have to wait for that one to get done. Leticia. I think we made some money type stuff here before. Now we can build war breeds here. Warbreed and Phalanx. So Warbreed is a monster, not an irregular. So none of the benefits that this city gives really helps it at all. The Phalanx also, I believe, doesn't gain anything from being in this particular city. Oh yeah, only archers and mounted troops. So manticore riders, I guess, would be useful here. So yeah, stables of vigor. So yeah, archers and living mounted troops. So actually, manticore riders from here would be pretty awesome. Because they would have fast healing, free movement, and high morale. That seems like the future of, of Leticia to me. Especially against the dwarf. Okay, Arcticana. We keep building Yetis, but... I think I'm just gonna... Oh, Ignatius is here. Shoot. Alright, let's get him... To the Yeti. Alright. So this is a good enough force to guard Arcticana. And we're just going to focus on... I know Yetis are fun... But we're kind of low on money. We're not low on money, but I just just to get the Yetis to the front line takes a while. I'm kind of thinking of maybe just producing merchandise here for a little bit first. We don't need extra production. We're not going to build machines here. I guess a great temple will be okay because this is kind of a safe backcountry city. And it'll help our overall mana. Production and capacity. But we're just going to focus on merchandise for a while. Okay, Geldorf. We really should in Geldorf too. Although, wait, no. If we can clear out this dungeon, then the Swordsmasters will be even more incredible. So we're going to focus on merchandise for a couple turns. We're going to get Frigoberto out there as soon as we can to clear out that dungeon. All right. Helia. Merchandise. Aurelia. Manticore Rider. Takes two turns, though. Is there a way we can help our production at all? Master's Guild. All right. Alright, Njordland, our fleet is ready. 
So actually, Nordland is just going to do merchandise. Being a coastal city, it should be rich anyways. Okay. Now let's get our fleet into some action. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while to get them anywhere useful. All right, Tamra's Fall. We also should plan for the Colossal Arena. That also would be a good place, I think, to build Manticore Riders, now that I think about it. The humans have the best cavalry in the game, even without the Manticore Riders with the Knights and the Cavaliers from the mod. But this place cannot build Cavaliers because we went the, uh, we went the traditional path, didn't we? Yeah, we get to build knights. Well, maybe we can build cavaliers. No, I think you have to choose between the knights and the cavaliers, and we're going the knight way. But I could have sworn the mounted archer were the mod unit. Let's see with Stoica, or Stoicana. Yeah, cavaliers. No, shock cavalry. Right, the mounted archers are warlord units. It's the shock cavalry that's the... Uh... And we have one on the way. Now they only take one turn to build. I don't know why this one's taking longer. So Tamra's Fall for right now. It is kind of near the front lines of Dwemus. That's what I'm thinking right now. So dwarves aren't exactly vulnerable to ranged units. You know what might hurt them? Well, no, because they're theocrats. I was going to say priests might really do a number on them. I don't know what to do here. Well, I guess we'll just start producing regular cavalry. We've, yeah, we've got the, the bonus building. Yeah, so we can get already experienced cavalry. But we can go straight to knights. All right, we'll do that. Aquaresia. Now we're going to do your alchemist guild. Isthmus City. Anything that helps with the defense. A trebuchet. Interesting, the road's going to kind of go around. I can live with that. All right. First of all, let's put our airships together. Okay. And our cavalier is not done yet. So we're going to wait, I guess, the next turn for him to join us. But these two are here. They kind of look alike. Like, it's almost like they could be brothers. They have, they have the same background and everything. Same skin tone. Alright. Gaspard. And two Swordsmasters. Alright. Bosper, you're just going to hang out. So is the Warbreed. And I thought I already told you guys to camp out. No, we weren't going to go to the mythical one. We were going to go to the dungeon, I think. Oh, good. More regrowth. There's another lost library, too. We can get even more spells. Alright, what do we have here? pretty tiny little army, but where are you headed? This is definitely my land. Okay, here's the monster spawning point, so we have to be very careful not to irritate them. Leonis is coming up. And let's give him some phalanx. Nice, he has a full army. Preston is going to head on over. So this is a weird scenario for us. I kind of want to move out here. Take out some of these buildings. 
Especially the Heart of the Blight. Build another city. But with Dwemus running around, I'm just really nervous about it. But, I mean, Preston and Leonis do not have to be part of the attack against Carl. You know what? I think I am going to send them together. Just to the to the west. Just to scout it out. Rigoberto is going to go to the dungeon. Eventually. Gonna go back to the town of Deepstone. Alright, let's see if we can't get around his... We can. Excellent. Give us some scouting on Carl. Let's give Bosper a Yeti. Mammoth Rider's gonna go up to Aquaresia. As will our Flyers. So the Flyer only has normal morale. Why is that, Flyer? It hates Blighted Terrain. I guess we're on Blighted Terrain. Or we're not, it's just all he gets is the Heptatopia. Whereas the Warbreed gets the Heptatopia, plus Preferred Domain, plus Race Happiness, plus Cheerful City. Interesting. I wonder if the Draconians should join Anya's army. Her, I think she has a morale bonus that affects everyone. That might be Frigoberto, though. Alright. Our dwarves have made it out. Alright. We're almost running out of things to research. Conqueror's Feast. Caster's units require negative 25%. Yes. We'll take that. That'll give us the gold we need. Okay, Satura, you have some clothes. Congratulations. Sell. Why can't we sell? Oh, we can. Excellent. Alright, Gaspard. Wow, it's already upgrading time for you. Blood Brothers. That is the perfect anti-theocrat. Perfect anti-theocrat ability. We're going to hold off for that. Deep stone. So we can also build good cavalry here. But that's it. The stables by itself really aren't that spectacular. So let's just build a wall. Wanderer's Way. I think we're going to go the support troops. But we also get armored troop bonuses too. I don't think we have any armored support troops. That's, there goes my wandering priest idea. Although the Alchemist Guild would help that. With the Magic Academy. Well, for right now, we just want money. Okay, Aquaresia. I guess you, have, you got your little magical building. So I guess a shrine makes kind of an Aquaresian kind of sense. Stoicana. We're just going to bust out Cavaliers. Meanwhile, the new one's going to join up. And these guys, by the way, because Stoica is referred to as the shield among her worshippers, this particular unit of Stoic and Cavaliers that's going to be traveling with Anya are going to be referred to as the Shield Bearers because they are bearing the light of Stoica into battle. So we've got the Shield Bearers. We've got the Rage of Winter. We've got Chunk. Anya, Scree. We have the Will of Wodenaz. We have Lattice's Lament, and finally, the Gilded. And on top of that, we're going to have a Manticore Rider pretty soon. And what was the other one we were going to get? I thought at the time we were going to get a... Uh, we were going to get a Mounted Archer from... From Leticia, but since we have the Berserkers representing the Lattice Maiden, I'm actually very, very serious about moving this Draconian Flyer over there. It is tier 3. 
I mean, it doesn't need the airship, but I just want to double check here. Because Anya's bonuses only apply to her own four units. They do not apply to the other group, so I have to be careful about that. Let's give her the shield. I just want to see if she has any kind of morale. Imperial Authority. Yes. All right, so the, she gets the flyers. That has been determined. Because they'll be happier with her. And that'll give a little bit of uh, multiculturalism to her force. All right, the trebuchet is just going to hang out. Build a second one. They're kind of expensive, trebuchets. And the road goes to Helia. Wow, what did we blow up? Did we just steamroll a bunch of farmhouses? What did we do there? The road is there, right? Yeah, kind of. All right. And we'll just continue building the road till we get to Njordland. You guys have done all I've asked of you and more. Wow, we've already got these monster hunters or uh, mounted archers up to elite. That gives them projectile resistance. I don't want to waste them guarding this place. Let's get him up to the surface. All right, Bosper. You've got your Yeti. Guess Bard's gonna go up here for now. I want to see what Dwemus is up to. Eventually, I want Gaspard against Dwemus because he has the anti, anti conversion ability. I guess they're trying to take some of these neutral water zones. The why, since he can't actually control them, I don't know. We're gonna hang out in Stoicana. That's interesting. You can't move into a square that you can't see. So that means we just have to keep doing this. We just steamrolled that. And that's it for them. Builder number two is ready to go. And there you go. Look at that beautiful road. All roads lead to Aurelia. In one way or form. Okay, you guys are going to camp out. Satura is going to try to take out this dungeon. Next turn. Alright, Preston. I don't want you to get too far ahead of Leonis. So we're just going to sit you both together here. Oh. Go back. He has some gold level priests. Alright, a dungeon. Onward, Frigoberto. Dwarf Succubus. Goblin Assassin. Orc Assassin, Obsidian Wyvern, and a Goblin Scoundrel. So this is a... This is a, um... Rogue army. And they're gonna wait for me. Well. Let's give them the satisfaction. I want them to get a little bit closer together before I unleash Ikara on them. Dang it. Why are you doing this? Well, I gotta watch out for that assassin strike. I have to be careful here. Is 
because they can do some damage to me if they work in concert. In fact, I'm going to have Frigoberto... He's going to relentlessize this entire army. Nice. Here they come. The succubuses are going to try to seduce our guys. They failed. I don't even want to imagine what sacks would look like between a warbreed and dwarven succubi. Okay, they did their assassin strike. That was expected. And what's the wyvern going to do? Get killed, essentially. Alright, what I want here... 60% fire protection. So we'll skip that. Man, Sucky Bite are tough. Alright, let's... Um, flank these guys. Excellent. All right, Frigoberto. Nice. Finish him off. Finish the Wyvern off. And it's just you guys, assassins. Severely poisoned Frigoberto. That was not a nice thing to do. And Ikara finished him off. Nice. So now our Warbreed is elite and has charged, although it already had that. We have another expert knight. And we gained a Draconian Elder, an Ogre, and some gold. That's a tier 2. Ogre is tier 3. I'm thinking about whether or not to put the Ogre... Nah, we have too many interesting beings. I'm going to do the Manticore Riders, so that way you guys have a chance to roleplay if you want to, characters in those armies. Alright, so now Frigoberto is going to head over to this dungeon. I think everything else is clear. This is clear. Is there a way to visibly tell if something is not clear? I guess it has that kind of shininess around it. Okay, this... Navy is amazing. And they get immolating projectiles at Elite. That's pretty cool. Alright, what do we have here? A raging maelstrom. But only if it's inside your domain, which would be really hard to do for some place in the middle of the sea like this. Alright, we were able to get around Zoki. I'm going to put these guys up with the rest of our menagerie. Put the dwarf up there too. Why not? Why not? We're turning into this really weird force of freaks and auxiliaries. Do we miss one a battle? Alright, he lost his cherubs and his crossbowmen, his two weakest units. But he was able to conquer that. Don't know what it does for him. Nothing, really. It doesn't do anything for you unless you have it in your domain, which he does not. Alright, Satura. Healing is good. Unlocks Damnation of False Idols and Celestial Decree. And Rish Kayan declared war on Carl. So now Carl has a two-front war to deal with. Rish Kayan might be really strong. He's a warlord, too, just like us. So he, he must already have Draconian Manticore Riders, which are probably horrific monstrosities. She doesn't need the Vow of Poverty because she already has that ability. I think she could use more mana, actually. I know it's kind of basic. She has so much cool stuff to choose from. All right, this time we're getting to see a human Manticore Rider. So we're going to see actually what we would normally produce. This is a weird little army, actually. This is pretty much what our class and race should look like. OK, 
Okay, but I have to be a bit more careful with these guys because they're not as good as Frigoberto's army. Swords Masters to the front, though. Alright, Satoru, what have you got for me? We need to give you more spells. I don't think spiritual protection is worth anything against this army. This looks like Frigoberto is going to do his thing instead. Which will allow her to move up a little bit. Alright, bring it. Really? You don't want to bring it? Dang it. Let's get her over here. Move these guys up. She can get behind them. Our knights can take the flank with our mounted archers behind them. Meanwhile, let's stone skin these guys. What is he doing? I guess he's waiting. He wants to give the monster hunters a chance to fire their ranged weapons. Just out of range. Alright, stone skin on the knights. Okay, here they come. Monster hunters. Unfortunately... Human mounted archers are not monsters, so they don't get any benefit to that. Ooh, good morale, though. Ooh, it's Monster Hunter versus Monster Hunter. I like that. There's some poetic justice to that. Certainly, Wodenaz would not be happy to know that there's unaffiliated Monster Hunters out there coming after us. Why do they have such good morale? Alright, let's hit the Manticore Rider. He's crippled. Or 30% chance of crippled. He'll only... Even at his worst, he'll only do 7 damage to us. And we can do 14 to 22. Okay. Satura. Oh, I have a plan. I have a plan. Oh, we can't convert him. Damn. That would have been awesome. So really, all our choices now are between two groups of monster hunters. Better than nothing, though. Let's do it. And you work for us now. Let's start by shooting your friend in the back. Excellent. Alright. You guys aren't so lucky. You're actually going to die. Alright, the Manticore Rider is pretty much almost dead. Satura, will you do the honors, please? Wait, you don't have... I got rid of your holy thing. I sold it. You lost your ranged attack. That was dumb. Okay, I got them some experience. Our knights are only veterans, so we could use the experience. And they got it! Excellent. Alright, so we gained a unit of monster hunters in addition to a goblin ward rider and a human knight. Alright, we'll actually take the knight. And the rest will go To Drew's. Oh, that's right. We have our stone giant we have to pick up. I forgot all about him. Yeah, so we have room for the stone giant and the flyer. Oh, we need a man. We're going to get the manticore rider. All right, we're going to start without a manticore rider, I guess. 
So we're actually going to head up here because the flyer can meet us because he can fly. All right, deep stone. Where are we going from here? I'm not that happy yet, so how about some public baths? Arcticana. And the reason I'm doing it this way instead of just setting it to infinite is because I don't want to forget about the city. So I'm only doing a few turns. I want to forget about it for a short time, but not, you know, forever. All right, so when we have this cleared, our infantry is just going to be amazing. But until then, we're going to merch it up. Aurelia. Another Manticore Rider. Let's look at him. Did we even build him the first time? Oh, no, we didn't because we were waiting for the uh, the support building. Excellent. Okay, Frigiberto. All right, Leonis got his armor. Bosper got his boots and his mount. Now, the problem with Njordland, when you really think about it, is it's so far away from the front line that any navy built there is going to take forever to get where it's going. So I think we're just going to focus Njordland. We'll build some defenders, first of all. But then after that's done, we're just going to focus on making money here. So we don't need anything fancy. Maybe two halberdiers and two archers. And we can now start building Haralthusain airships. I thought they'd have a medal or something, though, with the Flow Rock Quarry, but I guess not. So now we do need the Monument of the God King, the Monument to Wodenaz. And... It's not a support unit, so that's kind of useless. Slaughter Pits. Infantry, yeah, we're going to avoid that, too. What's the other thing you get from the dungeon? Oh, the treasury. Right. We're going to build that one next. Okay. Farmeria? Is this going to be Phalanx Production Center? Aquaresia? Temple? And Isma City. We have two trebuchets. That's plenty. I guess we'll get our baths. Alright, we now have two stone giants. I want to see if we can produce other kinds of giants. So we have some money now. Let's build the men here of fire. To get fire giants. Alright, these two. These two fellas. They aren't very great at moving around here. We could clear this with two armies. A Blight Elemental. Some Dread Spiders. Neat. All right. We have some Doom Crows. This place looks like it's been pretty much left alone by the rest of the world, even though Camille appears to have two cities here. Well, a city and a domain. Yep, you're going to stay where you are. And the road to Njordland is almost complete. Okay, Gaspard. You know, I feel like it's almost time to take out these undead. But they're within the radius of Dwemus. So I don't want to give him the bonus from it. Well, they're up here, actually. You know what we could do is we can move kind of to the northwest here. Take this tower... I think this is Carl's domain here, which is on our side of the river, so we could grab it. That makes sense. There's another evil city there. Alright, and then there's Bosper with his Yeti and his Cavaliers. You guys are just going to wait until you're full army. Well, one thing we're really good at is road building. Good... Good Aurelian engineers. Alright, you know what? We should continue the road, too, up to the Haraltishain. Now that I think about it.
You guys are going to camp. You're going to wait to be picked up. All right, Satura. Let's head her up to the tower. I don't think she can take that whole army by herself, so I am a little nervous about it. But see, this army here is not going to get any of the... If she has a second army with her, it's not going to get any of the bonuses that her main army does from her. It's only the five people assigned to her. They get those bonuses. Alright, what do we have here? They look slightly weaker than they used to. I think it might be in our best interest to take them out. How long for our navies in the area? A while. <laughs> Go in. There we go. Alright, let's go up here and see what we can see. Alright, so that's definitely Carl's dwelling. He has not explored the castle of the Lich King yet. Okay. So we have our dwarf hunter, our frostling mammoth rider, and our human warbreed. That's a interesting army. If ever there was one. Plus, soon to be a Draconian Elder and an Ogre. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, we're almost at 40 minutes in this one. This series, I just love playing this game. And the, as a result, the series just go on forever and ever. But we're looking really good. It's so funny, because if you actually look at the map, we don't really take up that much of it. Right? I mean, we have this very small little corner of the map here. So we have Dwemus here and down. Let's say this whole area here belongs to Camille. Rish Kayan is here, and he might be incredible, because if he's declaring war on Carl, that might mean he already has Onyx Rillig or Zarna too, or Carl does, which means that, like, if he wins this battle, it'll be us here, and let's say up here, with the exception of Zoki. Hopefully he'll declare war on us so we can take him out. But then, if we if we were able to take Merrifield and this continent here, we'll have this continent, we'll have this middle continent... And then it'll be Rishkayan in the north and the west, and a little teeny bit of Camille here. Again, I'm really concerned about our good alignment, so I don't want to declare war personally on anyone. I want to kind of goad them into declaring war on us. But meanwhile, Arcticon and Tamar's Fall need to gain a teeny little bit of influence just so we can clear up these little areas here. And I think this is we'll never get this area here because these cities are as developed as they could possibly be. Looks like there's, yeah, there's these two halfling cities. If we go to war with Camille, or if that ever happens, we should grab Trontil immediately as like a stepping point. And Leicester. Esvodam, I believe, is a domain. Then she'd be left with Bittercrest and Thor's Bud. I think in taking out Rish Kayan, it might be in our best interest just to go for the throat and attack his capital with everything we've got. Hopefully he's in there, and so we could take him out without having to take his empire apart piece by piece. Carl, we don't have that luxury because he's super far away from us. But regardless, we're making some great progress and soon Anya's army is going to be on the march or on the fly, I guess, <laughs> so you would word it. And that's going to be a lot of fun to see how how we role play with them and in especially in battle, you know, it's going to really suck if we ever lose a unit cuz we'll we'll care about them hopefully. <laughs> anyway, once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. This is Age of Wonders 3, a role play campaign where you, the viewer, gets to make the decisions. Thank you so much for watching, for participating, for commenting. Have a good one.